you're a composer, so I'm curious about when you first started composing. Um, quite early. I think more or less when I had a fairly advanced level on the guitar, I was sort of inventing my own pieces. And to begin with, it was quite simple things, like I had a piece where it would be dum, bum, bum, or something like that, and I will turn it dum, bum, bum, and so, oh, this is mine. Uh, to begin with, it was kind of like a childish or a child's play in a way, and also kind of, mm, to be honest with you, kind of a little bit like, oh, I can also do this, sort of a kind of, uh, as a child, you have that kind of confidence, I think, uh, because you don't really know so much, so you just think that I can do this and I can write music. Um, so it started very early, and it's something that I sort of continued almost throughout my whole musical life, and it's it's kind of really important to me. Um, at a certain age, when I was around sort of 13, 14, I, I would say I was seeing myself more like a composer than, than a guitarist, and I thought that would be more my path. But then um, being an instrumentalist and, and being in contact with other music is sort of really important, and, and I really enjoy that. So um, when I was more, say, 16, 18, and then started to go to you know college and all that, it was really the guitar that was the main thing. And composing also, what happened to me was that, uh, I mean, to begin with, I didn't know anything. I was just doing it. And at a certain point, I was also studying more about composition. And I was finding out more about, you know, the, the composer sphere and meeting other composers. And at a certain point, uh, it's sort of my inspiration kind of dried up. I got very much caught up in, in composition techniques and, and, and uh, the pure technical machinery about it. And it kind of totally dried up and, and I kind of lost... Uh, I, I guess it's also the same like growing up, one searches a kind of identity as a person. I would also search for an identity as a, a composer. And by doing so, um, uh, it kind of disappeared a little bit. I think mainly because I wasn't actually looking for uh, my own voice. I was just rather looking for where do I belong? Am I you know, modernist? Do, do I use this technique? Or do I apply the hexachords or the dodecaphonic? Or do I, you know, what form do I use? Like in a more superficial way. That made me kind of uh, stop composing, say. But then at a certain moment, um, again, it really came back to me, but in a totally different way. Um, and I started writing in much more simple, uh, say clean, simple um, kind of music. It was much more straight from the heart. And... Um, and it's almost like I started over again, and, and from very, very simple things that just really spoke to me. Um, simple phrases, simple melodies, uh, things that really spoke to me. And, uh, and that's, it, it was not at all a, a modernist style that came out anymore. It was not a very technical style. More modal, more impressionistic. And I really feel like I'm building from from there now and and uh, now from the last say three four years I, I really found sort of what is my voice and what is my style even though it's changing and that is the the really interesting thing about composition is that uh, it, it is a process and one goes through changes um, so this, it's almost like one piece leads to the other and it develops in a certain way. So does, does being a composer change how you look at the music that you're studying? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, it's, it's really like two, two sides of me that, let's say that is, for, for many years, I, I used to think that in a way it was it's a negative thing that I was really one foot in both. Because 
in a certain aspect, one is working a little bit half time, uh, sort of from both. Because, uh, you know, if I would only be a composer, I could dedicate a lot of time to studying instrumentation, counterpoint, all kinds of things, uh, expand, you know, those aspects. Or, or as a guitarist, I could sort of practice more. But uh, with time, I really realized that it wasn't so. It's rather that the two of them uh, stimulate each other. Because when I'm, I'm practicing something, I'm working with music that I'm learning about composition because you, you really know a piece in and out when you perform it yourself. And, and not just from studying it, but when you perform music, you kind of, something else happens, you know, in front of people. You, you're more in contact with what music really is about somehow. And the same with composing. I mean, because when you understand music from that point of view, that it's actually something you have to, that is created, it's expressing something, I always feel that I, I, I get more behind the notes of things. And uh, this might be a bit controversial, but I, I think that most performers would benefit a lot from, from also trying to compose more. And I think if we look back in history, it used to be more the case. I mean, if you take, if you only look at guitar in the 19th century and so on, they, they were all composers. Of course, at that time, there wasn't really any repertoire to speak of uh, from, from their time, so they had to compose, but somehow we're in the same situation too. And even though one doesn't have to have the ambition of, of you know, creating any masterpieces or something like that, but just by doing it, it's, it's a really nice thing to do together with performing it's like another aspect because we very much take the we have the music like this kind of black dots and uh, we're supposed to sort of interpret them but it for me it means a lot to know that you know it could actually have been turning out in a different way could have taken different turns but for some reason the composer decided it for be like that and um, if one look in another perspective too, there is a kind of, mm, for me, interesting relation between interpretation and composing, which is, as an, an interpreter, you start with a score, which is, say, like a, a very static thing, just a bunch of sort of information, data. And as we learn the notes, we, we get to know them, they start to speak to us. We, you know, we try to understand the score, we look at the structure, the form, the, the indications, what we have basically. And then it starts sounding and those sounds are starting to, to mean things to you. And eventually we bring that up, sort of we, we sort of chew it very well into a state where we are saying, okay, let, now we can perform it so we can share it with other people. And then what we then have done is sort of to present this music for the people. And then as you're listening, as a listener, you're then going through a, say, experience. That's really, it's quite intangible what you can experience. Even though, again, that can be, you can have 100 people listening to the same piece and their experience can be quite different. But again, ultimately that is the result. So we go from the written score to the experience of the listener. Now, being a composer is sort of the same thing but backwards. That we are first having sort of say an intangible experience, something we want to express. Say something that, for me normally at a certain moment there is sort of some feeling or some uh, that is not very concrete. It's sort of something that really drives me to sit down and compose. Uh, uh, and it has to be quite strong because you really have to sort of lock yourself up. It's, it's a very lonely thing to go inside. and really, So it really has to be something that really grabs me to do it. And then it's really the, sort of the other way around. I'm trying to put that into sounds and those sounds turn sort of into some phrases, melodies, whatever. It can take many different turns and and um, 
And in music, of course, it's a special thing. It's not just like a fixed thing, what we do with a piece of music. We, we express a sort of process. So again, that is the sort of the potential that lies within the music to develop into a piece of music. So it's really kind of a long process. And then ultimately, we ha I kind of have to put it down into, into notes, very precise. I have to put my support to here, this note there, exactly that rhythm, so, so, so. So then somehow, that's, then my job is finished as a composer when I finish the score. And then I hand it, you hand it over to the interpreter. And then sort of, and again, that's, so it's kind of like a cycle. And, and the, the fun thing being a, both interpreter and uh, composer is that I sort of get to experience the full circle. And I, I quite enjoy that, finishing a piece. And I say, okay, it's finished. I like to put it away for a little time. And then I say, okay, now I'm an interpreter. 